Let us illustrate the synapses on the concept of the somatic reflex arc. We need to make a scheme of the spinal cord. where the grey matter is organized into dorsal horns, sometimes lateral horns and ventral horns on both sides. And there are ventral roots and dorsal roots that will form a spinal nerve which then undergoes branching. So there are dorsal horns. This is ventral horn. Central canal. And this is the gray matter. And let's start with the motor neurons that are sitting in the ventral horns. And their axons are running through the ventral roots of the spinal nerve and then to some muscle fiber or groups of muscle fibers striated muscle fibers and here it ends with the motor and plate so that's a motor neuron It's axon that goes through the ventral root and uh, this is the spinal nerve and its branches the dorsal and ventral ramus. The axon goes here and ends with the motor and plate on my muscle fiber so this is the executive part of the arc and let's consider the sensory part uh, with the somatic receptors in the skin this would be epidermis and the dermis forming the skin and here we have for example the free nerve endings as the receptors for pains and this is actually a dendrite of a neuron the body of which is sitting here in the spinal ganglion and it's a pseudo-unipolar neuron with the dendroxin and the axon goes to the dorsal root into the dorsal horns of the spinal cord gray matter and in the most simple example in the so-called monosynaptic reflex arc it interpolates on the motor neuron again okay. so this would be a somatic Recept receptor in skin. Uh, let us say this, this will be free nerve endings. Th that perceive the modality of pain. And this is a dendrite. It goes to the spinal nerve here. It's, it, it's the cell body
as a pseudo unipolar sensory neuron, endospinal ganglion. And via the dorsal root, the axon here of that neuron goes in the gray matter. So this is an example of a monosy monosynaptic somatic reflex arc. Let's have another example with autonomic neurons. Again, we start with the spinal cord. In this case, we consider the lateral horns. That's where the autonomic nervous neurons reside. And we got again ventral roots, dorsal roots, with a spinal ganglion, sp short spinal nerves. But we need to consider also the sympathetic ganglia or the truncosympathicus. And there's a communication here that goes into the ganglion and back. So let's describe the situation. This would be a preganglionic neuron of an autonomic nervous system in the lateral horn of the spinal cord gray matter. It would be an autonomic motor neuron or the visceral motor neuron its, ac its axon goes to the ventral root to the spinal cord and through a connection called uh, called uh, uh, white communicans ramus into the sympathetic ganglion where it interpolates on the cell body of a second postganglionic neuron or postsynaptic, the axon of which goes back through the gray communicans ramus somewhere to the periphery. So this is the ventral root. The axon goes to the spinal nerve into the white communicans ramus. Into the sympathetic ganglion. sympathetic ganglia are chained into the trun truncus sympathicus and that's where uh, a postsynaptic neuron resides the first neuron interpolates with the second one and the axon of the second one goes through the gray 
communicants Ramus back into, for example, Ramus anterior of the spinal nerve. That will be the Ramus posterior. This is would this will be in case of sympathetic nerve. Uh, pathway. In cause of a parasympathetic nerve pathway, a situation is similar. But the interpolation in a parasympathetic ganglion is usually much more closer to the peripheral organ that is innervated by the parasympathetic. So this would be parasympathetic ganglion, and here would be the second or postsynaptic post synaptic parasympathetic neuron. This was this one was second postsynaptic sympathetic neuron.